one of former U.S. President Donald Trump's signature border policies went before the Supreme Court this week. The Biden administration brought the case after a district judge sided with Texas and Missouri to reinstate the so-called Remain in Mexico policy. The justices will decide by June whether the Biden administration must legally enforce it. For more on this, we're joined by former Trump deputy national security advisor and board member of the American Conservative Union, KT McFarland. Uh, KT, really great to have you with us. Uh, you know, one of the central questions in this case here is, is whether the statute for release is of significant public benefit. We heard this over and over during oral arguments. Justice Sotomayor asked the U.S. Solicitor General if you had to detain everyone, could you? Her answer was simply no. Uh, but then she goes on to argue that this program is too costly and it puts a strain on diplomatic relationships. How do you see all of this playing out? Well, if President Trump figured it out. You go to Mexico and you get the Mexican government to keep American people who want to come into the United States illegally. You keep them on the Mexican side of the border. And then once they've been vetted and cleared, they come over legally to the American side of the border. But, but Kelmini, I think this looks to a bigger, a bigger picture here. What are the Democrats doing? You know, we keep telling them, well, don't you understand this is a humanitarian crisis? Don't you understand this is a terrible thing, open borders? They totally understand. They don't care. Why? They think that with an open border, they are going to get millions of new voters into the United States, and all those new voters are going to vote for Democrats. Democrats can know that their, their agenda, their policy prescriptions are not popular with the American people. So if they know they can't get the voters that are here, they're going to get new voters. And the thing that they're doing, though, that's such a sort of foolish mistake on their part, is that Hispanic voters are now voting at least 50 percent with Republicans. So while they think they're going to have millions of new voters to keep them in office, in fact, they're bringing in millions of new potential voters who will probably kick them out of office. Yeah. And, and separately, Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas uh, faced a really tough week on Capitol Hill getting grilled over how his department plans to handle as many as 18,000 migrants that could cross the border per day when Title 42 ends. Uh, and also how the departments handled the record number of people that we've already seen coming across the border. I want you to take a listen to this. 42 illegal uh, immigrants were uh, encountered at our border are on the terrorist and no-fly list. Are any of them still in our country? Gentlemen's time has expired. This is an important question for this committee. Are any of them still in our country? Congressman, I will um, deliver can't. to you a response with respect no, to No, no, no. That's a simple question. Are terrorists, on, people on the terrorist watch list, no-fly list, are they still in the United States that you've encountered on the border? Uh, Congressman, some of them may be still in detention. So I will Have any I of them been released? You. KT, this isn't just a matter of the resources at the border needing to have the mm -hmm. capacity to handle this number of migrants that we could see crossing. I mean, this is this is national security. Yeah, it's national security for two reasons. One, if illegal immigrants are coming across the border, we have no idea who they are, where they're from. Sure, terrorists are coming across the border. Our weapons coming across the border. But also, the second thing that, that none of these people want to address is the fentanyl crisis. You know, fentanyl is killing Americans, particularly American youth. And that's what the illegal immigrant mules they're bringing across the border is fentanyl. Fentanyl made in China, I would point out. So by having an open border, not just are you having people who come into the United States, but you're having potentially terrorists coming into the United States, weapons coming into the United States, and illegal drugs that are going to kill our children coming into the United States. Yeah, and with all of that growing calls uh, within the GOP to impeach Mayorkas, Republican Congressman mm -hmm. Andrew Clyde on Spicer & Co. said that the impeachment articles are already being drafted there. How do you think that that could potentially play out? All right, so here's what's going to happen. Republicans, by all estimates, are going to take the House and the Senate in November. So no matter what happens the rest of the year, of this year, of this term of Congress, the Democrats and the Biden administration are never going to be held accountable. What will happen come January of 2023 is it will be a very different American Congress. The Senate and the House of Representatives in the hands of Republicans will be able to pursue Mayorkas and, and the whole gang. And they'll be able to delve into what really happened with Hunter Biden's laptop. Why did 50 American defense officials, former defense officials, insist that that laptop was Russian disinformation planted by the Russians conveniently right before the American election. You know, when you see Congressman Jim Jordan, 
where it gets cut off time and again, and other senators and congressmen who are trying to press administration officials on very legitimate issues, they're cut off time and again. They will not be cut off starting in January. All right. KT McFarland, thanks for being with us on Saturday Agenda.